again and welcome to Chawton House and this morning I'm going to show you how to make a very simple snowflake decoration that is made with tatted lace. I know as I make lace sat in Chawton in my volunteer capacity that a lot of you know how to do tatting. Maybe you've got an old tatting shuttle in a workbox, perhaps belonging to a grandparent. Uh, there's a modern equivalent and a plastic one here. And that is your main requirement to make this little snowflake. Any crochet cotton can be used and uh, it's a good way of using up oddments in your workbox. So it's made in three stages and we'll give you the directions as we go. It was actually inspired as I sat in the Great Hall one Christmas. I think it was two years ago. Um, there's the Christmas card that inspired me. And there were some decorated evergreens in the corner. Now, the, the Great Hall is panelled in oak and it's quite a dark building. And firelight and candles looked magical but I thought wouldn't it be lovely to have some little snowflakes hanging on that evergreen. So that's what's inspired it. Now the directions are fairly simple. If you can do a double stitch and a ring which we will be using in this uh, pattern you'll be fine. I'll also show you a lock stitch and uh, how to stiffen the finish snowflake if you've made it in cotton. To start with we'll put about a metre of the cotton onto a shuttle and we're going to do a ring stitch. Now if you remember the main problem with a ring stitch is that it must be able to pull up so you need to bear that in mind. We'll put the cotton around your hand and then make a double stitch, pull it up tight and it's at this point I check to make sure that ring is running properly. So on this ring we're going to make another double stitch, there's the first half and you see we've transferred that thread so that the thread on the shuttle, the running thread, is clear. And there's the second part of the double stitch. Transfer the thread and you're ready to do your next picot. There. If at any point making a ring you're uncertain, you can check by pulling the bottom thread that the ring will still operate. Give yourself a nice bit of thread to play with. Never skimp on thread. It's much better to have a bit left over than to run out. I find the same when darning in ends. Too short an end cut is more difficult to work in. I should have mentioned that once a round is finished we cut off those ends and just with a needle secure them. Now I'm losing count. How many picots have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. A little bit more thread required there. Oops. Another double stitch. Pico, that one's number seven. And this is my last Pico, number eight. And close that, finish that off with a double stitch there. And then, of course, we pull the shuttle thread. Oops. To complete our little ring. I lay it down there. It will sort of naturally have a right side and a wrong side that you'll see as we go along. The end threads, and you will need a needle that can easily accommodate 
the thread just to darn the two little ends in. So about four or five stitches should do that and trim it off nice and close to the work. We then will need to create the second round, which again is done with just some simple rings and little chains that connect them into a flower shape. And I've now got my shuttle wound with about a metre and a half to two metres of thread. That shuttle's a little tight, I'll just undo the screw a little to have it flowing freely. So, to create this, I'm going to start with making a ring and I'm going to put four double stitches in there. There's one. Two. Three. Four. And now we're going to do a new technique. You may not have done this before. We're going to join the picots. So I have my ring here. That's the running thread on the shuttle. Make sure it's still nicely running. Give yourself a good generous ring there. And then with a small hook, hopefully you've got one on your shuttle or you can use a small crochet hook or a lace maker's hook, just to go in through the picot of the first round and pick up within the loop of the ring that you're making. Now we'll just pull that through That's the most difficult bit, I promise. And then with your shuttle, go through that loop. And we need to just make sure that we've transferred that thread so that our ring will still pull through freely. So just double check you've got that right. It's a nightmare undoing tatting. And just check that you've still got that ring Flowing three freely. I wasn't too sure about that one there. So again, it's worth the time. It's worth taking the time to double check it before you proceed. Yeah, that's running freely now. And then four double stitches will just finish the little joining rings around the centre motif. The second one, number three, and number four. Then holding that between my thumb and index finger, I'm just going to tighten that ring, which uh, on the pattern is called closing the ring so that we've started to make the first of the middle ring. And just half of a double stitch here is used to lock the thread. So you may see this referred to as a lock stitch in some patterns. It took me a long time to work out what they were talking about. So now I'm going to make a chain. This is the bit I know the beginners like. A chain which will form the little links between the rings. So nice and easy this one. Just a simple double stitch. We're going to do four of those double stitches. There's number two. There's number three. And number four brings you halfway. And in this chain, it's a linking chain, and we're going to put a small picot in the middle. So after the fourth stitch, 
so that we will be able to join the outer ring of the motif. So there is the little stitch which we will use to join the third round. And three more double stitches. We'll finish that chain. So to recap for that second ring, the second ring of the snowflake, you're going to be making small closed rings, four double stitches joined to that picot, and then the chain that links them is four double stitches with a picot and another four stitches. We reverse the work as so to make the next ring. So. Can you remember? Four double stitches. One. Two. Three. We're ready to join this little ring to the next picot on the first round. So again, we put a little hook or the hook on your shuttle if you have one through the next picot, pick up the thread, the running thread of your ring. This bit's a fiddly bit. So we pick that up now here we go and we need to just pass the shuttle through there double checking of course that that is correctly transferred so that that ring still moves freely and then we can complete the ring with another four double stitches. I think that's four. If you lose count, Sometimes it's easier just to run your fingernail over the stitches to count them. And it wasn't, there was only three there. So a fourth stitch will complete that little ring. And then we can close the ring by pulling this thread. Magically it closes. Half of a double stitch is called the lock stitch and that keeps everything nice and firm. I think the lock stitch is one of the reasons why tatting survives so well. You can see tatting that's been handed down through the generations. And in fact, many visitors tell me that they have bed linen and mats that have been decorated by their grandparents. So we're ready now to do the third little sorry the second linking chain before doing the third ring and we carry on until you've got all of the center picots joined and then you can cut the thread allowing a good couple of inches so that you can sew in the ends neatly without being seen and then it's on to the third round i've already started one here and this time we're going to uh, start at a picot with a chain of six double stitches and form the little ring on the outer edge. Again, it's formed with four double stitches, the picot, another four and pulled up. Six chains will link it and then link into the picot of round two, six chains, the little ring, and I'm just ready to do a ring, 
the third ring on this chain. So over the fingers and starting off with the first double stitch. One, two, we've got our double stitch. One, two. So there's two double stitches. I'll put the thread pull that side, it won't confuse. Three. So in a chain, all of the stitches are worked using the thread from the ball. The shuttle thread just runs through the middle of the chain. This is really the first stitch you learn when you start tatting. Nice and simple Ooh, until you drop it. One, two, three, four, five. Six. And then we have a little one. And now we're going to do a new technique. You may not have done this before. We're going to join the picots. So I have my ring here. That's the running thread on the shuttle. Make sure it's still nicely running. Give yourself a good generous ring there. And then with a small hook, hopefully you've got one on your shuttle or you can use a small crochet hook or a lace maker's hook just to go in through the pico of the first round and pick up within the loop of the ring that you're making. Now we'll just pull that through. There we are. That's the most difficult bit, I promise. And then with your shuttle, go through that loop. And we need to just make sure that we've transferred that thread so that our ring will still pull through freely. So just double check you've got that right. It's a nightmare undoing tatting. And just check that you've still got that ring flowing through freely. I wasn't too sure about that one there. So again, it's worth the time. It's worth taking the time to double check it before you proceed. Yeah, that's running freely now. And then four double stitches will just finish the little joining rings around the centre motif. That's the second one. Number three. And number four. Then holding that between my thumb and index finger, I'm just going to tighten that ring, which uh, on the pattern is called closing the ring, so that we've started to make the first of the middle ring. And just half of a double stitch here is used to lock the thread. So you may see this referred to as a lock stitch in some patterns. It took me a long time to work out what they were talking about. So now I'm going to make a chain. This is the bit I know the beginners like. A chain which will form the little links between the rings. So nice and easy this one. Just a simple double stitch. We're going to do four of those double stitches. There's number two. There's number three. And number four brings you halfway. 
and in this chain it's a linking chain and we're going to put a small pico in the middle so after the fourth stitch so that we will be able to join the outer ring of the motif so there is the little stitch which we will use to join the third round and three more double stitches will finish that chain So to recap for that second ring, the second ring of the snowflake, you're going to be making small closed rings, four double stitches joined to that pico, and then the chain that links them is four double stitches with a pico and another four stitches. We reverse the work as so to make the next ring. So. Can you remember? Four double stitches. One. Two. Three. Oops. Four. And then we're ready to join this little ring to the next pico on the first round. So again, we put a little hook or the hook on your shuttle if you have one through the next pico, pick up the thread, the running thread of your ring. This bit's a fiddly bit. So we pick that up now there we go and we need to just pass the shuttle through there double checking of course that that is correctly transferred so that that ring still moves freely and then we can complete the ring with another four double stitches. I think that's four. If you lose count, Sometimes it's easier just to run your fingernail over the stitches to count them. And it wasn't, there was only three there. So a fourth stitch will complete that little ring. And then we can close the ring by pulling this thread. Magically it closes. Half of a double stitch is called the lock stitch and that keeps everything nice and firm. I think the lock stitch is one of the reasons why tatting survives so well. You can see tatting that's been handed down through the generations. And in fact, many visitors tell me that they have bed linen and mats that have been decorated by their grandparents. So we're ready now to do the third little sorry the second linking chain before doing the third ring and we carry on until you've got all of the center picots joined and then you can cut the thread allowing a good couple of inches so that you can sew in the ends neatly without being seen and then it's on to the third round i've already started one here and this time we're going to uh, start at a pico with a chain of six double stitches and form the little ring on the outer edge. Again, it's formed with four double stitches, the pico, another four and pulled up. Six chains will link it 
and then link into the pico of round two, six chains, the little ring, and I'm just ready to do a ring, the third ring on this chain. So over the fingers and starting off with the first double stitch. There's number two. It's very quiet here at Chalton House today. Autumn is just setting in. Still a few visitors coming, but we're busy making preparations for Christmas. So it's a good chance for me to sit down and make a few extra snowflakes. I think I made three dozen last year, but it's a big house to decorate. In fact, if you're bored this autumn and enjoy tatting, maybe you'll send us one and we promise we'll decorate the tree with all of those that we get. Probably put a picture on the website too. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Now I've just done my third double stitch there. Remember how I count, just running my thumbnail over them. One more and we're there. So we'll close that ring. See how it looks? Yep, like that one. And then we can go into the joining chain. I can reverse the work for this or leave it as it is. It really doesn't make too much of a difference at this stage. And there's the chain ready to form again. So we're just working now on the ball thread. And this time we need six double stitch in a row. And I know it's not a true snowflake with eight points, but uh, it was just the way the pattern worked out for me. You may have a more elaborate snowflake pattern if you are an advanced tatter from a book, but we wanted this one simple enough that a beginner could perhaps learn the two or three basic stitches required and then go on to do this maybe just in an evening. So there we are, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're going to join the chain. Now I haven't got a hook on this shuttle, so I'll use my little hook here. We're going to go in through the PK of the second ring, catch that ball thread, Pull it up through the shuttle, goes through just to secure that thread firmly in place. We probably don't need a lock stitch at this point, but we'll go on anyway. I do believe there's a cat hair stuck in my work. That's very naughty of my cat, but she does get everywhere. Perhaps some of you have got a cat that's the same. A ball of thread is far too much of a temptation for them. And then we are just that's four double stitches on the chain, five. six and then you're ready to make the next little ring. So we keep going around ring number two until we've completed all eight points of our little snowflake. At this stage it looks a little bit crumpled so an, a little press under a damp cloth is always useful. You may be able to buy spray starch I can no longer buy it anywhere near where I live. So to make them nice and stiff to go on a Christmas tree, I actually use some 
diluted PVA glue. I pin my star out. You can use a piece of polythene, um, sorry, polystyrene covered with plastic, but you want something that you can just pin the little outer picots into a nice shape that you like. So this cork board is also quite useful. Uh, pin it out until you're happy that the star looks a little more even. And then just brush the solution of diluted PVA glue over with a small paintbrush. It will take a while to dry. A hairdryer might speed up the process if you're impatient. You may decide you want to stiffen the other side too. But uh, I only really think it's necessary to do one side, particularly with a cotton thread, which seems to soak up the glue nicely. I put these on a very tiny, thin piece of invisible thread or maybe some um, thin fishing, wire, fishing line, anything like that, so that they're ready to hang. I think hanging in a window is rather nice as well, particularly with candlelight at night time. Here we've got the Christmas card that I um, found. It had a little star on it with eight points, so I thought I could make a little metallic snowflake and add it to the Christmas card. It will be simple to post, nice and flat in the UK. They measure the thickness of our letters, so uh, that should pass as an ordinary letter. I do hope you enjoy making some snowflakes and remember, if you get carried away, you can send one to us at Chalton House. Thank you very much. Goodbye.